It was 140 degrees. Ooh. I was sweating profusely. Sweat dripping from my forehead, from my hair, in my creases. Yes, <laughs> in my creases. My legs were red, my arms were red, and this was all by choice. I was at a Korean spa in the gold room. There's gold properties, healing properties, detoxifying properties. And I was in there a little longer than I should have been. I wanted to go into the ice room that was right next door, but I was waiting because I went to the spa to relax. I wanted peace and quiet, and there were two people in the room next to me in the ice room, and they were being loud, rambunctious, obnoxious. I was giving them their time that they needed to leave. These rooms are so intense, the, the energy and the, the the heat or the cold is so intense that most people won't stay in the rooms for very long, maybe five to ten minutes. But these people were there and they, would, they weren't leaving. So I was ready to pass out in the gold room and I decided, fine, fine, I'm just going to go into the ice room. Got up, went into the ice room with an attitude, <laughs> wanted them to leave, and I smiled at them. <coughs> that phony smile. <laughs> a phony smile. Went across the room. They're small. These rooms are pretty small, so they are a bit intimate. And I just, I mean, I'm by myself. They're sitting there chatting. Is an Asian woman and an Asian man. I learned very quickly that they were not married. They were not a couple. Um, the Asian man was engaged, and the girl that he was talking to was his friend. And he's had a lot of money. His fiance is spending money like crazy for the wedding, and he's focused on getting in shape. He works out at Equinox, or Equinox, and his friend said, of course you work out at Equinox. You know, it's a very prestigious gym. They give you fancy towels, you get a fancy soap and, and conditioner, they iron your clothes. Just kidding, they don't iron your clothes. <laughs> but I add that to it because it's about $200 to $500, the membership, depending on, um, on which one you take. But stars go there, too. And so people dress to the nines to go and work out, especially the women. Well, one day he goes to the gym and he's going to just take it easy, like me, at the spa. He's like, I'm going to have you know, a peaceful time. I just run on the treadmill. There's five treadmills. He gets on the second one on the left side. Um, there's one next to him that's empty, and then three on the other side that are all empty. And he's running. He's just taking it easy. You know, he sets it up, and he's like, good. He's done marathons before. He, he's got the stamina. He's got the energy, but he just wants to take it easy. So he's running, enjoying his little thing, his little time on the treadmill, has headphones in his ears, and a black man, I don't know his name, comes up and joins him on the treadmill right next to him. The Asian man said in his head, why? Why does he have to come right next to me <laughs> in my space, in my zen? Why couldn't he be on the treadmill at the end and like have his space? He came in, he speeds up to his pace, the black man. So now they're in the same, they're, they're running at the same time. And he synchronizes with him with his arms and with his legs. And the Asian man is like, what the heck is going on here? This is ridiculous. So he's like, I'm going to show him. I'm obviously in, best, in better shape than him. He still hasn't made eye contact with him. He speeds up, and now he's going at a faster pace. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to show him. I'm going to show him. And he's just going, going, going. Or Sorry, his hands are like this, folded, actually, in like a punching motion. So he's going faster for like three to five minutes. But at, like, at minute two, the man next to him speeds up. <laughs> Same pace synchronizes the arms and the legs. And he can tell, because they're both doing the same thing. Why is this guy copying me? He's thinking, like, this, is he starting a, is he, does he want to get a, in a fight? Is he trolling me? Like, I just, like, I'm coming here to work out. What is he coming here for? So he's like, okay, I'm gonna show him. I've done this before, I've run marathons. He speeds up. So now he's going at a faster pace. He opens his hands, you know, in like a <laughs> high five motion, and he's going really fast. He's like, I can do this. And he's running, running, running. He's like thinking in his head, why am I doing this? I came here to relax, to just have a nice workout. Now all of a sudden, I'm competing with this guy. Black man next to him speeds up opens his hand and makes it very clear that, he is, that he's running with him. They're keeping up, they're both synchronized, and he's just like, holy crap, this is ridiculous. I'm so tired. He's sweating profusely now, 
probably in his creases as well. As me. <laughs> and what's funny is that, yeah, I'm not going to go there yet. So he's got this funny confusing. They're both synchronized. You know, black man's being very clear. Maybe he's a little bit more because he wants him to know I'm with you, man. And he's thinking, okay, I'm really, I'm dying here. I'm actually going to pass out and I'm sick of this. Slams the thing down, slams the stop button down, stops, and he's just like pissed. Sorry, Lord. And he takes his towel, he turns away, but he, he makes sure not to look at the guy next to him because he still hasn't made eye contact with him, still really upset, and just <laughs> it ruined his it ruined his day, right? So he's walking away and he hears a guy saying, Good run, man, that was a good workout, great job. And he turns around just to be like, okay, fine. I'm going to face this guy and let him know how he just made me feel. He turns around, and he turns again, and he's like, Kevin Hart? <laughs> and he's like, yeah, man, that was so good. That was so good. And he said, you were messing with me the whole time. Kevin Hart said, I was. And you're, you're in shape, man. They gave high fives, and they went and they got some pictures together. And yeah, here I am, like, totally immersed in this conversation, came in the ice room, really upset, right? I did not, I wanted him to leave. And it's kind of interesting, because it was foreshadowing for me. Because he was in the same mind space. He wanted me in his own little world, didn't want anybody to interrupt his world, and he was forced to open up, right? To open his heart, to be present. He was forced, he actually recognized it. He would, if he didn't turn around, he would have missed that opportunity to meet Kevin Hart. That's like a once in a lifetime experience. And it's kind of cool. If I hadn't have gone into the ice room, I would have missed an opportunity to hear that story. I've told this story several times to people because it's just awesome. And I know it's true. So my message to you, like I'm grateful that that was a near miss, but be present. This way you don't miss any kind of opportunities like that that are super special. Have a good day. Namaste. <laughs>